Hello everyone and welcome to part 2 of HHD Unit 3 Area of Study 2 Promoting Health and Wellbeing. In this video we will look at dot point 2 which is Australia's health system including Medicare, private health insurance, the pharmaceutical benefits scheme, the National Disability Insurance Scheme and all of their roles in promoting health in relation to funding, sustainability, access and equity. Let's begin by looking at Medicare. Medicare is Australia's universal healthcare system. Now it's important to note that when asked to describe or define Medicare, you use the word universal in order to receive full marks. Medicare provides all Australian citizens, permanent residents and people with reciprocal rights access to healthcare at no out-of-pocket cost regardless of age, income or ethnic background. Some services that are covered by Medicare include general practitioners, specialist consultations at public hospitals, surgeries and follow-up procedures at public hospitals, eye tests, x-rays and pathology which is blood tests. Services not covered by Medicare include treatment in private hospitals, dental services, allied health services, cosmetic surgery, ambulances and health aids. How is Medicare funded? Medicare is funded by the federal government through the Medicare levy. Australian taxpayers are charged 2% of their taxable income to help the government fund Medicare. We've also got the Medicare levy surcharge for people that earn higher incomes and have not taken out private health insurance. An additional 1 or 1.5% 1 of their income is taxed and this encourages people to take out private health insurance in order to lessen the burden on the healthcare system. And we'll look at this in later parts of the video. We also have general taxation, which can be used. How does Medicare work? We've got the schedule fee. This is the recommended price for services as set out by the government. Doctors can then choose whether they want to use the schedule fee or if they want to charge more or less, and that's at their own discretion. We then have the gap. So although the government sets the schedule fee, Medicare only pays a proportion of it, depending on whether it is an out-of-hospital or an in-hospital service. The remainder is called the gap, which the patient has to pay. Out-of-pocket expenses... Any extra money a patient has to pay for a service, including both the gap and any extras the doctor may charge. And bulk billing. The doctor has chosen to charge 85% of the schedule fee, meaning that there is no gap or out-of-pocket expenses that the patient needs to pay. This makes it more financially accessible for patients. The Medicare Safety Net. The Medicare safety net is extra financial support given to those who have exceeded a certain threshold of the gap costs in one financial year, meaning that for the remainder of the year, their schedule fee is fully covered. We will now take a look at some of the advantages and disadvantages of Medicare. Some of the advantages include choice of doctor for out-of-hospital services, allows Australians access to Medicare's benefits when in countries with reciprocal rights, covers most of the basic health services, Medicare Safety Net provides further financial support for medical services once an individual or family's gap exceeds a certain threshold. Some of the disadvantages, however, include no choice of doctor or surgeon for in-hospital treatments, waiting lists for elective surgeries, Medicare does not cover all health services and often does not cover the full amount of a doctor's visit so patients may need to pay out-of-pocket costs. 
Medicare in relation to sustainability, access and equity. Sustainability only covers services deemed medically necessary, thereby allowing this service to be in place for future generations. Access, choice of doctor, heavily subsidised, therefore financially accessible. And the Medicare safety net makes the service more accessible to those who require additional treatments. Equity, system is available to everybody and does not discriminate. Different number of services ensures everybody receives the care they need. And the Medicare safety net provides extra financial support for those who need it the most. The Pharmaceutical Benefits Scheme. The Pharmaceutical Benefits Scheme subsidises the cost of 4,000 medications listed on the PBS for Australians and individuals from countries with reciprocal rights. Funding. The PBS is funded through general tax revenue. Australians are taxed a small amount of their taxable income to help the government subsidise the cost of common medication. Safety net. Extra financial support for those who incur significant co-payments. Once a certain threshold is reached, the co-payment is reduced. So unlike Medicare, where the whole schedule fee is covered once someone reaches the threshold, the PBS safety net requires a payment, but it is, however, at a reduced cost. Advantages and disadvantages of the PBS. Some advantages include that it is available to all Australians. It covers most common essential medications and it provides further financial support through the safety net. Some disadvantages include that it is a significant burden on the government. It does not cover all medications and it does not cover the whole cost of medications. Individuals are still required to make a co-payment. The PBS in relation to sustainability, access and equity. Sustainability does not cover all medications, thereby allowing this service to be in place for future generations. Access, medications are provided at local pharmacies, making them more physically accessible heavily subsidised, therefore making medications financially accessible. The PBS safety net gives extra financial assistance to those who require more medication more often. And equity, available to all Australians. The PBS safety net gives extra financial support to those that require more medications, focusing on disadvantaged population groups. Closing the Gap PBS co-payment for Indigenous Australians provides a concession rate for Indigenous Australians rather than having them pay the full PBS co-payment. We will now compare Medicare and the PBS. I've got them on a table side to side just so we can see the differences and similarities. So Medicare, access to health services covered by Medicare that is free of charge. It's funded by general tax revenue and the Medicare levy, so 2% plus the Medicare levy surcharge. That's for those who earn a certain income but choose not to take out private health insurance. Available to all Australians and those in countries with reciprocal rights. The Medicare safety net provides further financial support. And services covered include GP visits, specialists, surgeries, eye tests and x-rays. The PBS enables purchase of medication on the PBS list at a subsidised cost. It's funded by general tax revenue. It's available to all Australians that hold a Medicare card and individuals from countries that have reciprocal rights. The PBS safety net enables further subsidy and the PBS subsidises most medications accessible in Australia. Private health insurance. Private health insurance is a type of insurance where members pay a monthly fee referred to as a premium 
to cover the costs of health-related services that are not covered by Medicare? Why do people take out private health insurance? It benefits people who regularly require services not covered by Medicare. Private health insurance will cover the cost of emergencies that require ambulance transport and costs of treatment in private hospitals. Elective surgeries for those that have private health insurance are able to skip waiting lines. Benefits, many benefits for its members, but it also indirectly benefits those who have chosen not to take out private health insurance by reducing the burden on Medicare and the public health system. Funding, the funding is completely dependent on people's monthly premiums, which they choose based on the level of cover they want. It is, however, important to note and to realise that once a person signs up for private health insurance, they are not immediately entitled to all services part of their plan. For example, an individual may instantly receive ambulance cover, but may have to wait a few months for something like cosmetic surgery. And this is referred to as the waiting period. There are some incentives to take out private health insurance. So these include the Medicare levy surcharge. As well as this being a form of funding for Medicare, this surcharge is an incentive for high income earners to take out private health insurance. Those who earn above a certain threshold are required to pay a 1 to 1.5% surcharge for Medicare depending on their income if they do not take out private health insurance. We then have the private health insurance rebate. The government incentivizes people who take out private health insurance through providing them with a partial rebate for their premiums. Individuals or families can choose to pay a reduced monthly premium and the government pays the rest or the individual or family pays the full premium and then claims the rest back at the end of the financial year as part of their tax return. We then have the lifetime health cover. When taking out private health insurance, those who take it out after the 1st of July after their 31st birthday, pay an extra 2% on their premium for every year they are over 30 when they take out the policy. This encourages and motivates people to take out private health insurance at a younger age, at a lower cost, and keep it for life. Advantages and disadvantages of private health insurance. Some of the advantages include different levels of cover, and different companies depending on people's needs and wants, covers services not covered by Medicare, alleviates the pressure from the public health system. Some of the disadvantages include that it can be costly for individuals and families, people often pay for services they do not use, and there can still be out-of-pocket costs for some services and policies. Private health insurance in relation to sustainability, access and equity. Sustainability. The waiting period means that companies are able to stay in business to service people now and in the future. Alleviates the pressure on the public system. Access. The government provides individuals with a partial private health insurance refund which assists in making it more affordable. People have access to public hospitals, private hospitals and a choice of doctor. People have access to more services through private health insurance. Equity, those who earn less are entitled to a bigger refund, making it more affordable for them. And different companies and premium options are available for all sorts of people and their income levels. The National Disability Insurance Scheme. What is it? Implemented by the National Disability Insurance Agency that provides services and support for Australians and permanent residents with permanent disabilities 
under the age of 65, as well as their family and carers in order to live as normal a life as possible. What do they do? They enable Australians with permanent disabilities to have access to essential services. They provide access to community services and they provide individualised assistance. For example, a 17 year old with a permanent nerve disability may want to play basketball and they may be provided with a special wheelchair to do so. Funding, it is funded by a 0.5% levy by the Commonwealth Government, therefore raising the Medicare levy to 2.5%. Advantages and disadvantages of the NDIS. Some advantages include that it has individualised plans for those under 65 with permanent disabilities. It is completely funded and it not only helps the person with the disability but their family and carer. Disadvantages? Not all people with disabilities are eligible. It incurs an extra taxation levy so this can be a community burden. And it can be quite complicated to receive approval into the scheme. To conclude, we have the NDIS in relation to sustainability, access and equity. Sustainability, the 0.5% levy makes the scheme financially sustainable. Not all people with disabilities are eligible, meaning more people with permanent disabilities can get the full care they need. And it provides individualised programs, which means that only the resources that are necessary in assisting people are used. Access and equity, I have included these in the same category because they're pretty repetitive. So we've got available to all Australian residents under 65, irrespective of gender, race or income. And the individualised plans aid each person's specific needs. That concludes this video on dot point two from unit three area of study to promoting health and well-being. I hope your knowledge on this dot point has been consolidated and as always if you have any questions please feel free to email me or leave a comment below. Thank you.